But if anyone makes comments and stuff, it would be nice. You could tell me. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if you answer that. Mommy, what's my picture today? Wow. Hello! Welcome to the first of hopefully many YouTube live streams. We're talking about something extremely important today. And of course, we're going to enjoy a lovely pizza. A couple months ago, I don't know if you saw, but I said, I'm going to build a pizza brand from scratch. Now, I don't usually show you behind the scenes of how I come up with how I come up and what I come up with, but I'm going to do that today because in all honesty, this is not about me. This is about creating value for business owners, especially the ones who are in dire straits when it comes to their businesses. I really want people to understand that this is important. This is almost as important as running the business day to day. Why? Because it could make or break your business. I know I say that in a lot of different videos, but it's the absolute truth. Here's the thing, I've been a chef for 20 years. None of this was taught to me in culinary school or throughout any of my experiences in different businesses across that 20 years. What I found through research, data, real statistics, government derived ones, is that a lot of businesses are being opened by people who are not from the industry. They have more capital than the industry workers. I'm talking about food and beverage and hospitality, pub club, gaming, all of that kind of stuff. And that means that they lack certain expertise in terms of the product itself. But what they might have, however, <laughs> I see it mis-executed so many times, is their ability to understand what it is they're actually doing in this business we call food. We're selling. We are promoting, we are market researching, like every other industry. But for some reason, when it comes to food, people leave out those steps. So I've done quite a bit of product development and research into creating a recipe for a crust in a pizza that I can cook here in my home using the equipment that I've got. I've got no fancy commercial equipment to use right now. Luckily, that hasn't held me back. Why? Because testing, measuring, retesting, recalibrating, redesigning over and over and over to get hopefully what we will produce today, which is a really good looking pizza. Now, I haven't cluttered everything on the bench just yet, but I am going to get out ingredients. So you'll have to excuse me while I skip off screen momentarily to get those ingredients. But for now, I'll run you through what we're going to do. I've got my dough balls. Now these dough balls are seven days old. So I've got a hypothesis. And the hypothesis for this video is, what mistakes am I going to make? Let's find out together. I'm a bit nervous. I'm a little bit confused as to why I would show you that I'm doing things wrong. But it comes from a good place because I want you to understand that saving face in lieu of you being the boss or you being the owner or you being the head chef or the head barista is not a good excuse for doing this part of your preparation improperly. What you want to do is you want to have an idea. So I had an idea. I'll create a crust. It was crap. Then I got to researching. I got to testing again and now we're here. I've got a method that I feel works really well. It comes from other pizza professionals across the world through the powers of the internet and YouTube. I'm going to share it with you today. If you want the recipe, I'm happy to give it to you. <laughs> now I've got my dough balls. As I said, they have been sitting there for over an hour and they're nice and soft and juicy and tender and they're really sticky, but I'm going to show you how to deal with this. Here's a huge mistake that I've found in the pizza world. And it's not the dedicated pizza restaurants that know how to do this properly. 
It's the pubs and the clubs that just have pizza as part of their menu. So they don't make a good dough. And that they don't know how to treat their dough correctly. That's the first issue. So we're going to test to see if I've treated my dough correctly. We're going to test to see if I understand the, law, understand the laws of bread making and how to make a nice dough. The other thing we're going to test is pizza dough still nice after seven days? We're also going to test the recipe for the pizza itself, the ingredients. We're going to go a little bit Aussie, but we're going to emulate that Italian Napolitana pizza. We go on margarita, but we're using Australian ingredients with a little bit of finesse from myself. And we've got some market research professionals here to taste test. It's going to be a whole lot of fun. Now, what I want you guys to do is, especially if you know what you're doing in the pizza realm, is point at all the mistakes. Point all of them out. Make sure you don't take it easy. You tell me where's, what's wrong. You tell me what I'm doing wrong. If you know it. If you don't, that's cool. And we'll get there together. The purpose of this video is how to research and market and develop your products before you take it to market because it's expensive to do so and it can be an expensive, risky mistake where you have a great idea, you put it out into your business, it flops, you've now spent money that you have to recuperate some other way. If you repeat that process over and over, you've eventually lost your business. Why? Poor product development. That's all it is. Poor product development. And product development isn't just creating a food that you love. It's also about understanding the market. Who's interested in what you've got? Then you want to follow that process of asking questions such as, what do you think about X, Y, and Z on my dish? Looking at who's interested in the foods you're putting out. So I did a quick risk analysis a while back when I first started this project for the Gold Coast and Brisbane region. To me, it's not a great idea to create a pizza brand out of nothing. And I'm gonna share with you why later on after we've made these pizzas, I'm gonna share with you why I think the margarita pizza that I'm gonna to make today is a terrible idea for the region that I live. All right, I'm gonna go get those ingredients. We're gonna start building pizzas and it's go time. Could I get some timer action, please? <laughs> okay, very simple process. Roll our dough, then we pre-cook in part the dough. That's the first mistake. I know you don't do that with pizza, but we have to do it here in order to appease the capacity of my home oven, which only gets up to 250 degrees. I've been joined here by two little munchkins, <laughs> and they seem, to, they seem to want to weigh in on this pizza product development saga. Not at this point, I'm sorry. Okay, pizza trays, commonly found in pubs, clubs, bar, restaurants, who do commercial level grade pizza. You'll also find pans in your Domino's or Pizza Hut or similar type restaurants. They all use this and I'm going to emulate that method using this. Uh, we don't need that. I've got everything we need. Okay, oil on. I'm not using spray oil because it tastes bad. It doesn't taste nice. However, this is more expensive. I'm just going to spread it around. <laughs> yes, Evelyn Bear? Why don't you just get your chair and you come here? Yeah. I'm big enough. You're big enough? Okay, a good amount of oil. Just for clarification, there's no, dough, there's no oil in my dough. So that's, that's why I give a generous amount at this point. Okay, you good? Yeah. I want to talk to them. Oh, you want to talk? What do you want to say? I want to say I have 
iron stuff. Okay. It's really important to use semolina. In America, they use cornmeal as well for their deep dish. You use semolina, otherwise it's going to stick to everything. Heaps. What does it taste like? I'm just going to dry my hands out a little bit. That is super soft. I'm going to go straight onto that. Dry my hands out again. Make sure the upper side. <laughs> Make sure the upper side stays up. The bottom side stays down. I'm going to move in a circular motion. This is nothing new, right? Nothing new at all. Yes, honey. What's wrong? <laughs> you want to talk to them? Yeah, there's lots of bubbles. Where does the bubbles come from? Um, the air. No, they come from inside the bread. Ah. From the yeast. When yeast eats the sugars in the flour, it creates carbon dioxide, which gets released as gas. And then yeast. you can see it right there. What's yeast? Yeast is a little bacteria. Okay. So, I like that. I thought time came. This is soft and juicy, man. Alright, as you can see, I'm the world's best dough stretcher. You think you have to be very careful with the dough. You do. This is a 60% hydration dough, which for my skill level is about as maximum that I can handle. And you have to be careful packing it. Because I'm a novice. You have to be, be careful packing it. You do. Okay, these tomatoes, nothing over the top effort level here. I've literally got Annalisa brand tin tomatoes which have been chopped and I've strained and, them through a strainer. And uh, we have to be careful with smoothing it. It's really hard to do stuff and rose pens and have stuff as ever things and hard to do sweating with people at the same okay this is the end of phase one i stretch my dough i put my tomato sauce on and then i'm going to bake it for four minutes on the pizza stone and then we'll get to the next challenge and also we have to be careful with hot we have to be careful with hot okay while we're waiting i get the next dough ready so, how long does an average pizza take to make? I know. It takes Daddy, between two minutes? and four can minutes. Can I help you do the dough? Depending can on I how it's done. Daddy, can I help you do the dough? Not really. It's too sticky. Please. So, we've got a problem already. My pizza's going to take... I'll give you the answer now. It's going to take 12 minutes. No. No? Please. It's going to take 12 minutes, and 12 minutes is too long. When you're banked up, back at Domino's, you're in the weeds, there's pizza dough, toppings everywhere, and it's 12 minutes. Oh, the order comes out, the guy cuts it up, puts it in the box, the customer goes, oh, you forgot one pizza. Now they're waiting another 12 minutes. You see the issue? Product development. Daddy, can I please help you just one little try? Please help me. Please, Daddy. Okay, I'll show you what to do. Okay. Staff training is also really important when it comes to product development mm -hmm. because you want to ensure your staff know how to do it. Put your hands like this. Okay. Inside, in the middle. Do I do? In the middle, not on the outside. Do I do? Not on the outside, just in the center. Can I? Yeah, you have a turn. It feels so like weird. Beautiful. Okay, let me take over. It feels like eggs that have been perfect. <laughs> and it feels like it's like sticking. It's like, it's like... Not on the outside, darling. We want a nice crust. I uh, know. Okay. Get like that onto the bread. second baking tray. Spread it out. 
The oil also acts as a lubricant so that it's easier to get off the tray and it's also easier to spread it into that shape. In the real pizza circles, I would be cheating. This isn't how you do it. This is not the right way. But we're having to make do with the technology that's available. And I'm gonna smooth it. Some more, some more. More, more, more. Okay, thank you, Evelyn Bear. Well, we have to help and do stuff. It's great <laughs> to have to be good pizza, like my dad. You have to give it in five minutes. Otherwise, it want the crust won't be good and smooth. It has to be a good hint. Will it? Eggs and grease. You have to be careful with anything or you die. <laughs> she has a point. <laughs> okay. You do have to eat. Grab me a bowl, please. A big one or a small one? Eating one, normal one. Thank you. Okay, so you notice while the first pizza's in the oven, I'm working on other things so that I'm not stagnated. You want to maximize your time for you want it to be optimal in efficiency and effectiveness. So productivity plays a huge part and whether or not this pizza business is going to get off the ground, it's no good just put one pizza on, wait and do nothing. You need to be using your time productively in order to get the most amount of dollars per hour. Okay, that one's chilling. We're going to do the exact same thing with this one. We're going to start the base off. I've done a lot of pizzas this way and it works. But we're going to wait till the stone's free so that I can use that. Alright, that's four minutes. I'm going to give, get the pizza crust that we put, that we put in there and we'll show you the next, so next step. Okay, let's take a look. To me, that's looking pretty sexy. <laughs> okay, nice and puffy around here. Not so puffy around there. That that goes into uh, the quality of my of my uh, dough stretching. Okay. When you have to ruin it. I can help my dad. Put some basil on. Oh, we need that's to enough. space it out. Yep, that's heaps. That's heaps. That's heaps. Okay, on it goes. When it has to, you just can fix it when you need to put I can fix it? Yes. Okay, so we've got a mix. We've got a mix of parmesan. Parmesan egg. Mozzarella. 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 And tasty mozzarella. Tasty okay? mozzarella. They can have done. Okay, you put a little bit on each, tiny little bit, because that's enough. Is that much? Yep, put it on. Yeah. Perfect, well done. Okay, back in we go, another four minutes. But this time, I'm taking the tray out, and we're going straight onto the stone. Wish me luck. But when you have to burn yourself, you can call for help with your dad. It's good to have people not to touch heat. Heat is really dangerous when you have hot, fire or heat. When you turn to pink, you are bubble gum and... Bubble gum? Bubble gum. You're not okay, we're doing pretty good. Now on the second pizza, I've got the addition of some sliced tomatoes. We're going to see how adding sliced tomatoes changes the dynamic of the flavor and changes the dynamic of the cook. Some dough playing. Are you picking the dough? Yeah, I'm just trying to play uh, with it. Very good, very good. <laughs> Alright you guys, you gotta hop out because I need the space. Okay. Thank you very much for your help. My baby. I really appreciate it. Okay, so you've seen we put some basil on there. That's pretty that's pretty traditional when it comes to margarita pizza. And we're gonna continue that on the next pizza. Not as traditional, but I've done some market research. Most of the pizzas that you'll find in my region have this kind of cheese blend going on. It's an expected flavor. And why that's important is because when people buy products, what they're expecting predicates whether or not they'll buy. 
Let me say that again. What they have in their mind about what they think their pizza is going to be or their product is going to be affects whether they buy it or not. So now I've created an issue for me. And that issue is I'm imitating other brands of pizza with the same flavors. So if I'm competing with the same product, then I'm actually competing on the price of the product. The majority of people who buy the margarita pizza are female. If you want to see the statistics on this, go to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. You can go to Statistica. You can go to ibisworld.com and buy yourself a fancy expensive um, market research paper. Or you can go to Roy Morgan. There's a lot of research out there, a research um, analytics. So I've got to blend somewhere in the realm of familiarity with some form of innovation. The innovation to the people comes across as a value add. So they go, margarita pizza, yeah, that's cheese, tomato, basil. Very simple, right? Well, my innovation is for the people who are currently going to Domino's and Pizza Hut style pizzas, pizza restaurants, that it looks really impressive. It's not super greasy. It comes out and has a wow factor with the colors. So it, food is a visual thing. So visually, in my marketing, whether it be online or in person when they see the pizza, it needs to visually stand out and be compelling. Product development carries this part of the, as part of the process. Failure to incorporate it is instant death when it comes to those campaigns where you're marketing to, to customers who already buy that product from someone else. In the second pizza, we're gonna add in some slices of tomato, which I have seen in different pubs and clubs that I've worked in over the years. We're gonna see if it's nice or if it completely screws it up. What I've seen in the places I've worked at is they put all of the toppings on at once and when it comes to things like tomato, they have a high water content. That water leaches out of the tomato onto the pizza, you got a soggy pizza. So, as you saw in the first pizza, I put the base in with the tomato sauce, and then I baked it. My hypothesis is, it is because the tomato, the slices of tomato are underneath all this other topping, that the water leaches out underneath the toppings and onto the base. I'm going to put the tomato sauce down, which is done. I'm going to put the slices of tomato on and I'm going to bake it on that stone and evaporate that water off into the cooking chamber. That's time on the second round of, of four minutes. Let's see what's up. Now it's looking really good. It is looking really good. Set timer for two minutes, please. It is looking really good. However, the crust just needs a tiny bit longer and then we'll be good to go. I'm like super amped for this because I innovated past one of the, the steps in the process, dropping my cook down by two minutes. So yes, I initially said it was gonna take 12 and that was the old style. The new style actually takes 10. And when you're talking hundreds of pizzas per hour or per week, how many more pizzas can you make for all those extra two minutes, which were gained? It's great. So visually, it's got to look absolutely mind-blowing. Secondly, it's got to taste right. It's got to have the right texture. The cheese needs to have the flavor. The sauce needs to have the flavor. When you strain out those tomatoes, you're losing a lot of the water content, so you're intensifying that tomato flavor. And because it's not a blended sauce, the bitterness in the seeds doesn't transfer into that mouth feel. Also, you've got a couple of chunks here and there of the pulpy tomatoes, which adds texture. It doesn't have that boredom that you get with a smooth tomato sauce. Don't get me wrong, I love a smooth tomato sauce, but it can be boring because why? Everyone does it that way. Maybe except for those boutique Italian style pizza shops. That's what we're here to do. We're trying to combine some new innovations and transcend those commercial normalities so that we make something that cuts through the market. All right, I'm super excited. There's less than two minutes to go on this pizza and we have got 
success in our hearts, success in our minds. I'm, I'm like super chuffed. Like this isn't bravado. I'm genuinely really excited because it's been three months of research development and testing to bring this today. I've got one, and this is, I mean, this is not traditional, but I've got one hero ingredient, which I take from my days in the cafes. That's time. I'll show you what that secret ingredient is in a moment. Oh, baby. Get on there. All right, next pizza's going in. But first, tomatoes. Four minute timer, please. Okay, let's assess. Yep, four minute timer, please. Thank you. Okay, so it's holding its own weight. It's thin. Caramelization check. Love it. Let's test the crust. Uh, uh, oh, boom, boom, boom. It's crunchy on the outside, and we've got those whole pockets on the inside. You know what? It's time to eat. Let's see if I can capture the sound. Let's get right on in here. What do you think? <laughs> I'm obscuring the picture a little bit. Oh, baby. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It does, isn't it? Okay, we're going for the standard. Sweetie, hop over there, you're in the way. The standard eight slice pizza. And we're gonna finish with that secret ingredient. It's lemon oil. I love this stuff. Not too much. I'm just gonna season up a little. That's what I'm talking about. Who wants to try? Come try. Get a plate. Give you the cheesy one. Yeah. I'll give you the less cheesy one too. Okay. Now, not super super crispy. So maybe on the second run, we will go the full distance. We'll go the twelve. However, look to the crust. Uh, a little bit doughy. Let's find out. Beautiful flavors. A thought comes to mind. Chili oil. Oh, I would love it. It's, it's a little bit hot, Daddy. Mm -hmm. I look inside the crust, it's a little bit doughy. It's not, it's not as risen as I'd like it to be. Now, that could be the fact that it's seven day old dough. I doubt it. I think it's because the hydration is, is it's not it's not high enough. It's only 60%. Need to bring it up to that 68%. I'm gonna save this for that chili oil. You know the old olive oil and balsamic, you get the fresh baguette or the fresh chia butter and you dip it in there. I think that goes really well with the chi with the uh, chili oil. Okay, one sec you guys. I'm gonna get this off to my missus. They can be begin the fiesta. Yep, got it. Excellent. Okay, pizza's looking pretty swell. It's drying out a little, which I love. People 
always attribute moisture to flavor and that is true especially if it's a fat based moisture that's the kind of moisture we're looking for yes the water content makes a big deal too in this case I, I want to dry out just a little so that we can get that crispiness in the base oh there we go that's our four minute timer Yep, absolutely. A little bit drier there. A little bit drier. I'm gonna season now. See if we can get that salt nicely dissolved in. Basil on. I love basil. Uh, there's one bunch in here and it costs $2.25. Pretty, that's really cheap for basil. I'm going to go a little bit less than before. Because the amount of cheese makes a huge difference in this setting over the crispiness of the base. please I'm getting super amped up about this all I want to do is just add more toppings right and that's a massive fallacy when it comes to commercial pizza production firstly it costs more per portion you might appease in the moment that customer who goes holy cow value for money through the wazoo because there's more of their product but if you're out to eat You've got a selection of different things that you can have. If you have one large pizza where the base is 300 grams, then the toppings is up to three or 400 grams as well. That's a lot of food, especially if it's high fat type products, as is in small goods, things like that. That person can't buy any drinks because they're full. They can't buy anything else because they're full. They're gonna go home and be satisfied. You're going to sell them that pizza from anywhere between $5, which you can get a large pizza at Domino's. It's not a huge portion size with the toppings, but it will do the job. All the way up to 30, 35, even $40. These are your artisan, absolutely brilliant Italian style pizzas all around the country. What you want with your product is you want to appease the visual component, the taste component, the value for money component, the environment component, because people love going to different places because of how it is in those different places. Fine dining attributes elegance and luxury. Everyday diners like something casual. So that really plays a part into the, the buyer's mindset and the decision making process that they will make by putting massive amounts of food on a plate doesn't necessarily create a sale. You've got those different components of food, the visual, the smell, the taste, the texture, and of course the quality of the ingredients make a massive impact when it comes to that as well. So after all of this, you've got to ask yourself the question, what am I trying to do with my food? What am I trying to sell? Am I, am I selling the idea of feeding the whole family? Am I selling the idea of a meal for one or a meal for two? Am I selling the idea of an everyday meal? Because let's face it, without everyday customers, we no longer have an everyday business. We've got a bankrupt business. So people need to be coming in, buying your products every single day. How do we get them to buy the same meal every single day this is an arbitrary question you want to ask yourself. How can I get that person to buy that margarita pizza every single day? Well, you got to outcompete everyone on all of those facets that we talked about. The price, the visual, the quality of the flavors, the quality of the textures. How are you going to do that? That's where product development comes in. So for example, I've made all these pizzas. I give them to our family. They tell me what they like and what they didn't like. 
guess what? Just because they're my kids and my wife doesn't mean that they like everything that I do. And I want to find the things that I'm not doing well even more than the things I am doing well. So as I said in that first pizza, the, it was a bit doughy, not as crispy as we want it to be. It looked visually excellent, but the mouthfeel, the texture just wasn't there. The flavors are there. That's an everyday kind of meal. Maybe it's too big and I make it slightly smaller and someone can have that every single day and feel satisfied. They can order it with a glass of wine or a beer or a cider, gin and tonic. It's very versatile. Oh baby, second round of four done. Let's take a look. Okay, as expected, things are moving along. Let's go four more minutes, please. As expected, things are looking good, but let's see if they taste good. I'm gonna go back up to that 12 minute timer. Adding the four minutes could be just what I need. Now it's really important, and hopefully I demonstrated it well, that when I looked at the pizza, I looked at it objectively. I didn't go, wow, look all the effort I put into, the months, all the pizzas eating, yeah, I'm amazing. No, I didn't do that. I'm looking for the mistakes. I'm looking for the problems. I want to know that I'm doing it wrong because most people don't do this, most businesses. A lot of what I show you now comes out of sheer frustration, having to work alongside people who don't care enough about their business or don't care enough as an employee to do a great job, to produce awesome food and to make profits for the business that they work in. It blows my mind and it takes the love out of being a chef. The love of cooking is the one thing, but the love of making money is a whole nother thing. And you put those two things together, it feels amazing. This is the difference. Knowing how to cook, came from being a chef and working with other chefs, listening, learning, practicing. No problem. Knowing how to make money out of it, that's a whole different ball game. The knowledge base is not had. It required me to understand people, which means empathy, give away what I think is right and wrong about food production, food quality, flavors, recipes, and ask them, what do you like? And start to craft things more with them in mind. I'm sure if you're a Gary Vee fan, you would have understood by now that his number one priority for everything in business is empathy, which to me is an emotional way of saying, understanding your market needs, you understand their desires, you understand their decision-making process, you compare that with what they already buy and figure out a way to wedge yourself into their decision-making process. So we've outlined a few ideas today. It's got to look awesome. That means the product quality has got to be sound. You've got to have a good recipe using quality ingredients enough to produce the result you want. You've got to understand what people already want and innovate slightly, if not a lot, slightly above what they want, giving them the solution to a problem they didn't realize they had. And hopefully that's kind of the theme of tonight as well. If you've seen the title, how to make customers buy every single time, it sounds like an absolute pipe dream, but I can tell you, a customer is a customer before they even buy. They've already decided that they want your stuff, which means that your stuff has made an impact on their mind and on their heart well in advance of them spending a dollar. So if you're an online business and you have a shopping cart reminder where there's an empty cart in these potential customers, or not an empty cart, but there's an unfulfilled cart in these potential customers who have viewed your shop, that means that your stuff wasn't compelling enough to make the purchase then and there, which means they're making a money decision. They're making a quality of the product decision. They're making a decision based on how they feel at the time, whether it's late or night, early in the morning, someone's hassling them, their current bank balance, there's all these different variables. However, if you, take the Apple approach, which is give them something they cannot refuse, they're going to buy. And of course, you do have the ones who are super hard nosed and you really have to show them to the nth degree 
how awesome what you've got is. And of course, you might also have to catch them on a good day. But that's the whole part and point of this product development idea. Alrighty, I'm super chuffed. Let's go. 12 minutes is up and I'm ready to eat that dough. Oh baby. Okay, the lift test, yes. Caramelization check, yes. But I see a problem already. It's overcooked. Let's let's see though. Let's see. We'll get our trusty mic in there. Damn, that's crispy. It sounds good, right? Imagine you, your own pizza company, doing a Top Shot video, and you capture that crunch, a real one, not an insert. And everyone hears it, and they go. Holy cow, that is going to be juicy. Imagine, that's the buy-in. They're getting all ready. All right, we'll take a look. Doughy, again. Of course, I expected that. All right, let's check. Yep, a little bit of Ben. The New York way, acceptable. What am I feeling? I'm feeling like it's a little bit soggy. Let's find out. Yeah, that's a solid fail. We're not adding sliced tomato to the pizza. Simple. <laughs> what could I do to add value instead? I could take those tomatoes. I could blanch them in water. I could get them peeled down. I could get them diced really beautifully. I could take some banana shallot and some minced garlic and I could saute that minced garlic and banana shallot. I could then add that together with some lemon oil. Speaking of which, I need to add that and try it again, isn't it? with some lemon oil and the diced tomato and make a nice, nice little garnish. What an idea. Okay, let's juicy it up. All right, I'm going in this pizza. It's got basil still. Yeah, a little bit crispy. That is 10 times better. That is 10 times better. Okay, is it that the temperature's dropped a little bit and then the bread has been allowed to firm? Because as you cut bread, steam rises out of it. The doughiness on the inside begins to solidify. It's really common when you make, when you make batards, sourdough, you gotta let them rest. So the resting process could be part of it. The slight drop in temperature allows it to become a bit more firm. Hmm, we're getting some ideas. All right. I'm gonna go back to the drawing board and I'm gonna try and find out how to innovate without buying a pizza oven. I'm gonna try and find out how to innovate without buying a pizza oven. My theory is we're not gonna do the seven day dough. We're gonna do the 72 hour dough as prescribed and we're gonna move the pizza hydration because I've done the three day dough before and it works. We're gonna move the hydration up to 65% and I'm gonna see what we can do. Wish me luck guys, and I will put this back uh, on a YouTube live so that you can see what happens at a 65% hydration on a, on a 72 hour dough. Got any questions, hit me down in the comments. Please subscribe, like, all, this, all the usual stuff because hey, let's face it, this is a business too and I wanna make money so I can bring better products to you, better methods of business, better recipes, and keep sharing that food love. All right, have a good night. Say bye. Still on. Bye. Uh, let me turn off. Puppy pie.